Hey, what's up, people? This is Ike Love. I'm creating an author of the blog, The Viable Attorney, which is an inspirational blog where I share the wisdom and insights gained along my path of becoming a greater, stronger version of myself. And if you want to read more on the site, you can click under the window where it says description and you'll see the link where it says www.thevibalalternative.com. Now, today I want to talk about self realization. You be the standard of your own greatness. And um, I want to preface this with a couple of stories. I don't know which one to start with. Um, all right, I'll start with myself. So um, at the age of about 19, I was about 19, just about turning 20. And um, up until this point of my life, I just felt like um, I never fit in. And um, I had friends of mine who I looked up to because they were a very successful woman, they were good looking, they dressed well, they were intelligent, they were um, you know, supposedly doing the right thing by going to school, they were confident, they had their own swagger, and um, I basically thought that I was just one of those people that needed to try and fit in with them and copy them to be like them so I can have this success that they had, that a teenager, a, teen a male straight teenager wants to have, which is a successful woman. And, um, you know, I was still a little bit bitter at the world or even sore at myself because I just felt like an outsider. And so um, at the end of my sophomore year, for the first time, like going back home, I started spending a lot of time with these friends of mine, these friends of mine were successful women that I looked up to. And, um, you know, we'd hang out a lot in Manhattan, you know, as right of passage when you're in your teens, you hang out in the village and you go and talk to girls. And over a course of time, over a course of um, a couple of months, I would see my friend being a successful woman, but I noticed something after a certain while. I noticed that with their successful woman, each of them had their own style, that had their own tastes and preferences with women, that had their own skill set that made them, like each of them had their own unique skill set that made them uniquely successful women, you know? And of the woman they will wind up getting with. Um, one will like one of them and not like the other because the other person may, they may have thought they were good looking, but this really wasn't their type. And I just, so basically speaking, I noticed that each of them had success, but their own unique way. And a light bulb went up over my head. And I was like, wow, wait, these people have their own, their own unique success in their own unique way, their own unique manifestation. I'm a unique individual. I have my own um, unique characteristics and traits and strengths. I didn't really know too much what my strengths were then, but if I were to develop my strengths, my own unique style, what would my success look like? What would my success turn up like? And that was the first um, pillar of the viable alternative that I discovered, um, self-realization, where you realize you're, you're uniquely great, you're a unique individual with your own unique resources and treasures, and that you become inspired by the, your own unique greatness that you could potentially have. And that slowly was when um, my mindset started to shift from one of just being a victim to one being more positive. You know, um, I started becoming inspired to develop my own unique style, my own my own strength, my own skill set, my own swagger, because I've now realized I didn't have to be like my friends. Um, I did have, I know there was a minimal skill set I needed just to be like a normal person to interact with women, of course, but I realized that um, I have my own unique gifts and resources within me that will give me success like them, but in my own unique way, my own unique success. And um, yeah, and down the line, I did get my own unique success that was different for them, but that was the first uh, spark that um, started me along um, that journey. And if you watch the previous video I did, I kind of worked it backwards. I described the second pillar of the Bible turning was a self appointment, which was the next phase of this realization I had that I'm describing to you now. So um, I turn this on to you. You know, often in life, we have all these idols and icons and heroes of ours that we look at and we worship and um, because we're inspired by their greatness. And there's nothing wrong with being inspired by someone. I mean, if someone is great, I mean, of course, look at it and admire it and be inspired by it. But it's like after the inspiration, you're kind of like burning fuel. The next step is to take that inspiration you have about the other person's greatness and be inspired by yourself and your own unique greatness and what you uniquely can manifest into the world. Um, this time, like one year ago, I was like a year and a day, 
I did a, a holiday photo exhibit called Expressions of Divinity. And the um, event was basically an ode to um, the images of divinity from antiquity, you know, the Greek uh, sculptures. And um, the images at the event were pictures of me in um, uh, copper body paint with another female model. And um, I have like sometimes some of them had weapons on angel wings. And basically speaking, these pictures were to depict divinity. Because as a youth, I was always, I loved Greek mythology. I've always loved figures that were larger than life. And, um, you know, um, I just wanted to basically express that now. And so that's when I did this photo event that was dedicated to this whole divinity. But the purpose of the event wasn't just to sit here and worship these uh, uh, or, or um, idolize these uh, uh, figures of divinity. Really, the whole premise of the event was is that from time immemorial, man has worshipped these divine beings that were that they had witnessed uh, somewhere or another. These divine images of of um, divinity, men had worshipped them, looked at them, or because basically speaking, they were out of this world. There was nothing they were ever seen before. They were supernatural. Um, believe it or not, even if these myths. If, if uh, that were created of these um, gods, uh, they did supernatural things that man were, were, was in awe of. And um, what I wanted to say was, okay, you know, we had these images of divinity from antiquity that we worshiped because we were in awe of, but we are also divine beings ourselves. God, we were created in the image of God and God put divine things in us that's to be expressed outward. So. I was saying, let's take our awe, our captivation of these images of divinity and turn them inward and look at our own divinity and be in awe of that as we express it to the world. There's no reason why we should stop and just stop at just worshiping somebody for what they have. We need to take what, we need to take this type of inspiration and use it to um, develop our own unique greatness that's be given to the world at large. I mean, it's so interesting how we worship these celebrities for um, what they wear and uh, what they ate for breakfast last night or this morning rather, uh, how they were spotted walking down Fifth Avenue and everything like that. I mean, uh, great. But you know what, man? We do that to the detriment of our own greatness. It's like this person is great. We put them on the pedestal, but we put ourselves under the pedestal to look up them and worship them. But I'm like, how about worshiping you? How about worshiping, or rather, worshiping your own potential, your own unique greatness? How about being in awe of what you have? How about being in awe of your gifts? How about being inspired by how you could potentially develop, develop your own greatness and how it can change the world because it's unique and it was something that could never be seen before. So instead of being in awe about someone eating breakfast and eating ham and eggs for breakfast, how about being in awe of the fact of what you're eating for breakfast? Because you know what, man? You're a unique being. You're uniquely great. There will never be anyone else like you after you go, and there was never anyone else before you when you were here. So it's also captivating and inspiring that you're eating ham and breakfast just like the celebrity is speaking. There's nothing great about this celebrity doing it. Just that the, the, the celebrity has somehow or another harnessed his own unique powers or unique gifts and abilities to reach the station he has, whereas you may not have yet. But the fact of the matter is, is that just the fact that you have your own unique gifts within you, you should be sweating the fact that you're eating a certain type of breakfast or walking down the street. It's, it's, it should be all inspiring for that because it's all inspiring because you're uniquely great yourself, as crazy as it may sound, you know? I just, you know, get kind of tired of just how these people, people sweat celebrities and sweat these politicians. I mean, uh, like I said, there's nothing wrong with looking at someone as the greatness of what they've greatly done and be inspired by that. But be inspired by yourself. You have the greatness in whatever field of endeavor that you were meant to do in this world, whatever purpose you have. The skill set and talents and gifts and abilities have the potential developed in such a way that after you go, there could be college courses made about you for the unique greatness that you exhibited in this specific area of endeavor that you chose to um, express yourself in. There could be libraries written about you. There could be documentaries made about you, books written about you, um, songs made about you, poetry written about you, 
because of how uniquely great you were in this specific area that you chose to um or path that you chose to go down you know so instead of looking others at the unique greatness look at yourself at your own unique greatness and what you uniquely have to offer the world I mean, if we take now all the different areas in develop uh, of endeavor from sports to um, the arts, to entertainment, to um, the fields of science, to business, to politics, and you see all the people who achieved success in this area, you will notice that each person is successful for a different reason, for a different skill set, for different skills and talents. No two people are great for the same thing. Each person has their own unique abilities and gifts and talents that made them be able to reach this area of success in this um, certain field. And what's so funny is that if you look amongst, let's just say in this arena of champions, if you look amongst them, even though they're all uniquely and equally great, one person is admiring the other for what they uniquely have and then like, wow, how do you do that? How do you express that, you know? I mean, I'm uniquely great in what I can do, but I can't do what you do. You do your thing differently. I'm in awe how you do that. And the other person is like, you, oh, me, what about you? You have this, this, and this, and that, you know? And I am in awe about how you do that and how you accomplish that. And that's what being uniquely great is, or being a stand of your own greatness is to stop is to stop like worshiping other people for their own greatness at the detriment of what you are great about yourself. Take your unique greatness and be in awe of it, be inspired by it, harness it, develop it, and give that gift to the world. You know, there should be no reason why you should be putting someone else up on this pedestal as you're great and I'm not. No. If anything, if you're if someone's on a pedestal, you should be standing on your own pedestal, looking equally eye to eye at the other person and saying, you know, you're great, but I'm great too. You have greatness in this and this and this area, but I have greatness in this and this and this area. And your greatness is not better than mine. My greatness is not better than yours. We're uniquely great. And it's like comparing apple to oranges, but we're all, we're, we're on the pedestals of greatness, period, done. So, yes, you have a unique mosaic, unique mix of internal resources and treasures. That is a standard of greatness. Don't ever feel um, bad or discouraged or um, upset because you feel that um, what you have is not good enough. That's complete, utter bollocks. It's nonsense, balladash. You know, um, if if a certain um, no. It's nonsense, basically speaking. You should never feel bad for what you uniquely have. It just meant that it's developed in its own unique way and um, people just haven't seen it yet. And who cares if they've seen it or not? The fact of the matter is you should, the fact that you should see it is enough. So I encourage you, stand up, be proud, be awed and be inspired by yourself. And instead of looking at these uh, celebrities uh, in awe and inspiration, be inspired by them, but take that inspiration and be inspired by how you can be uniquely great by them. When we look at these um, uh, figures from antiquity, these divine beings and everything like that, that were created by God, these, 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 these um, oh my goodness, <laughs> these images of divinity, look at them, see their own divinity, and then turn that back into yourself and be inspired by your own divinity. The Bible says that you are uniquely and wonderfully made. You were made by the hand of God, so you were made to be divine. And therefore, you should be looking at your divinity with the same awe that other people, the ancients, looked at their gods in awe. You should be in awe because God created you fearfully and wonderfully. He created you as a divine being. He created you as something that with gifts, abilities, and talents that no one has ever seen before that can really have a profound impact on the world. He created you for you in a wonderful, complete, and awe-inspiring way, you know? I mean, if you were to be able to stand outside yourself and look at your potential, yes, you would be in awe. You would be in awe of it because it's something divine that's beyond your imagination, your ability to grasp and comprehend and understand. So instead of being, you know, so yes, take your, your greatness is the standard. You are the standard of greatness. Instead of now reading the paper about what celebrity got up at what time and how, oh my gosh, big deal. What a huge, wonderful deal that they bought their underwear at whatever store. 
You should be inspired that you bought your underwear at a certain store. You should be inspired that you ate a certain type of thing. You're doing this and you're doing that because you are unique. And the fact that you're unique is, is excuse enough for you to be inspired by that. So I um, hope I didn't ramble too much. Um, I hope that you got this message loud and clear. From this point now, be inspired by your unique greatness and see that as the standard. All right. So um, take care. God bless. Be uniquely great and peace.